Hi everybody. Today we discuss sulfur containing amino acids. Sulfur containing amino acids. So sulfur containing amino acids containing amino containing amino acids as we know they are 3 cm cysteine cysteine and methionine cysteine cysteine and methionine out of these cysteine cysteine and methionine m methionine is an essential amino acid methionine is an essential amino acid and cysteine cysteine are non essential amino acids non essential amino acids so methionine is an essential amino acid and because I had yesterday uh, the last video that I had posted was showing that the one which was an essential amino acid it is important you have to take it in the diet and through these essential amino acids further the, meta further the metabolism of the amino acids of their group takes place so methionine is the one amino acid which will lead to the production of other sulfur containing amino acids that is cysteine and cysteine so methionine will lead to the methionine is a precursor of methionine is a precursor of cysteine cysteine methionine is an essential sulfur containing amino acid and it is a precursor of cysteine and cysteine okay so there are three amino acids which are sulfur containing there is cysteine cysteine methionine of this methionine is an essential amino acid and it is a precursor or it is helpful in the formation of cysteine cysteine Cystathion, cystathionine, polyamines, and it is most important in transmethylation. So these are the important functions of methionine that we have to remember that it is helpful in the synthesis of cysteine. It is helpful in the system, cysteine, cysteine, cystathionine, polyamines and it is most important in transmethylation. Transmethylation means transfer of methyl group. Transfer of methyl group. So whichever molecule, whichever substrate requires the methyl group, methionine will transfer the methyl group to that substance and it will be important in transmethylation reactions. So this is the importance of methionine. Methionine is important in formation of cysteine, cysteine, cystathione, polyamine and transmethylation reactions. So now coming to cysteine. Cysteine is also important. Though methionine forms cysteine, methionine will form cysteine. But cysteine will form glutathione. Glutathione. Glutathione is gamma glutamyl cysteinyl glycine gamma glutamyl cysteinyl glycine so cysteine is required for the formation of glutathione cysteine is required for the formation of taurine cysteine is required for the formation of coa and it is also required in the formation of glucose proteins and most important in the formation of cysteine so two cysteine molecules join together to form a molecule of cysteine so cysteine is most important in the formation of glutathione, taurine and helpful in the formation of cysteine and the part of active sulphate in the CoA group, CoA SH because we write it as CoA SH so the SH is through the, sulfur, uh, through the cysteine. Now seeing the part of the, uh, as we have first told about the transmethylation reactions where the methionine will take part, so first we will see the substrate where it is important so the substrate and this uh, it is better to learn because it can be asked as an MCQ or it can be useful in writing the answer or in the writing in the metabolism substrate and methylated product so methionine is the one which is helpful in the transmethylation methionine transmethylation reactions first we see which which substrates require methionine transmethylation first is guanido acetate this cycle is in the formation of creatine guanido acetate it forms creatine 
quantity acetate forms creatine by taking the methyl group first second is norepinephrine 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 nor means no methyl group and epinephrine means it has a methyl group epinephrine second third epinephrine when epinephrine gets methylated it will form metanephrine it will form metanephrine fourth is ethanolamine 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 will form n methanyl n methyl nicotinamide n methyl nicotinamide n methyl nicotinamide fifth acetyl serotonin acetyl serotonin it will form melatonin melatonin so these are the reactions which are part of certain important cycles that we will deal with whenever so gonadal acetate forms creatine norepinephrine will form epinephrine on methylation epinephrine will form metanephrine on methylation ethanolamine will form n methyl nicotinamide and acetyl serotonin will form melatonin on n methylation okay the list is big there are more gonadal acetate forms creatine norepinephrine forms epinephrine epinephrine forms metanephrine ethanolamine forms n methyl nicotinamide and acetyl serotonin forms melatonin serine will form anserine sorry serine will form choline i'm mean, sorry serine will form choline serine will form choline carnosine will form anserine carnosine will form anserine and trna bases as we know trna bases uh, form methylated trna for methylated trna there are certain amino acids which are also methylated that is histidine histidine will form methylated histidine methyl histidine lysine will form methyl lysine and arginine will form methyl arginine so these are the important substrates that require methyl group and this methyl group is provided by methionine so serine will form choline carnosine will form anserine trna bases will form methylated trna histidine will form methyl histidine lysine will form methyl lysine and arginine will form methyl arginine so we will now see that how is this methylated group actually transferred to the substrates which are required this we see in the methionine metabolism the first part methionine forms now coming to the most important part that is sam methionine forms sam sam is s adenosyl methionine S adenosyl methionine. Sam is S adenosyl methionine. So this is adenosyl methionine. This means the adenosyl group will come from ATP. It leads to the uh, it forms three inorganic phosphates. Okay, in the breaking. So methionine forms S adenosyl methionine. ATP is broken down. Three inorganic phosphates are formed. The enzyme is methionine adenosyl transferase. methionine adenosyl transferase so this is the most important part in this reaction that is the formation of sam so s adenosyl methionine is basically the molecule which will transfer the methyl group to whoever it is required so so this methyl group is transferred to anyone who wants the methyl group the list we see just now so they can take up the methyl group from this adenosyl sam s adenosyl meth s adenosyl methionine 
and this sam will form second important s adenosyl homocysteine sa s adenosyl homocysteine in the presence of enzyme methyl transferase so s adenosyl homocysteine whenever it transfers its methyl group to anybody it forms s adenosyl homocysteine remember this reaction it is a very important reaction because whenever you write any cycle which is concerned with the transfer of methyl products this part of the reaction you will have to repeat in writing so s adenosyl methionine forms s adenosyl homocysteine whenever uh, accepted it takes up the methyl group and forms a methylated product in the presence of enzyme methyl transferase s adenosyl homocysteine s adenosyl methionine forms s adenosyl homocysteine and in the presence of enzyme methyl transferase this is the most important part of the reaction now sam forms sh and this sh will now form homocysteine homocysteine this is in the presence of enzyme adenosine homocysteinase adenosine now we want to break down so adenosine homocysteinase adenosine homocysteinase and this will form adenine liberated adenine and what we get is the product called as a homocysteine this homocysteine will now take part again in the formation of methionine in the presence of enzyme homocysteine methyl transferase homocysteine methyl transferase homocysteine methyl transferase the important part is that you have to remember that this part of the reaction requires vitamin b12 vitamin b12 so homocysteine when it gets converted to methionine in the presence of homocysteine methyl transferase this reaction requires vitamin b12 this is the first important point the second important point is that this reaction is important because it takes part in the one carbon metabolism so n5 methyl tetrahydrofolate here and it will form tetrahydrofolate so this part of the reaction is important because of two things first of all the vitamin b12 that is required for this part of the reaction second it is the part of tetrahydrofolate reactions that is one carbon metabolism so important part in this reaction is that it will form s adenosyl methionine that will help in the transfer of methyl group to whatever product substrate that is requiring methyl group forming s adenosyl homocysteine and when the homocysteine is formed it can again form methionine with the help of vitamin b12 n5 methyl tetrahydrofolate and homocysteine methyl transferase okay so this is a sulfur containing amino acid this is the first part of methionine metabolism the first part of the methionine metabolism cycle that is the formation of acetylenosyl methionine acetylenosyl homocysteine homocysteine and again the formation of methionine now what is the importance of this transmethylation reaction i told that there are subcertain substrates which require methyl group and they form methylated product so important compounds are formed through methylation second it prevents the it protects the proteins from their immediate degradation so this is the importance of methyl group now coming to homocysteine homocysteine is an important marker this homocysteine is an important marker of coronary artery diseases this means whenever homocysteine is increased in the blood uh, more than its normal level you it is acts as a marker of coronary artery diseases coronary artery diseases atherosclerosis so it is a marker of coronary artery diseases and atherosclerosis homocysteine is a marker of coronary artery diseases and atherosclerosis okay so this is the first part of methionine metabolism still we have not formed cysteine and cysteine which is an important uh, formation through methionine so this part of the reaction just shows the transmethylation uh, reactions and again uh, formation of methionine
Now coming to the methionine metabolism again. Now we have seen that methionine is formed. Meth sorry, methionine is essential amino acid that we take through diet. And through methionine to the initial steps we had seen that homocysteine is formed. Homocysteine. Now this homocysteine will be reacted by again serine. Serine. Serine though a non-essential amino acid but it is important because it reacts with homocysteine in the presence of pyridoxal phosphate in the presence of pyridoxal phosphate to form cystathionine cystathionine this cystathionine will form breakdown to form alpha ketobutyrate alpha ketobutyrate and cysteine so this is the amino acid that is formed and cysteine now this enzyme over here is cystathione beta synthase because because it is the formation of cystathionine so cystathionine thionine beta synthase and here it is the breakdown of cystathionine so it is gamma cystathionase and then it leads to the formation of cysteine now alpha ketobutyrate can form succinyl coa through various uh, by taking part in the cycle now this cysteine, cysteine is the amino acid which is formed from methane and this is also sulfur containing amino acid but the most important part is that the carbon skeleton of the cysteine is through serine the only the sulfur group in the cysteine is through methane so only the serine contributes serine contributes to the carbon skeleton serine contributes to the carbon skeleton full and only the sulfur group is by methionine and only the sulfur group is by methionine methionine so in uh, cysteine the whole carbon skeleton is through serine only the sulfur group is through methionine this is the first important point the second important point is that pyridoxal phosphate takes part in the reaction to form cystathionine now coming to the uh, third important point in this reaction that if the cystathionine beta synthase is, is uh, deficient or is absent this enzyme cystathionine beta synthase is deficient or is absent this one this enzyme is deficient or is absent it leads to homocysteinuria type 1 Because homocysteine urea, homocysteine will come into the urine, so it will lead to homocysteine urea type 1. Then type 2, type 3, type 4 are all related to one carbon metabolism. There will be deficiency of N5, N10, methylene, tetrahydrofolate reductase. So these are all deficiencies of uh, enzymes which are related to one carbon metabolism. The cystathione and beta synthesis, if it is deficient, it leads to homocysteine urea type 1. Increase in homocysteine as I told is a marker of uh, coronary artery disease and also it can be a marker when it is increased in pregnancy you could relate it that it increases in neural tube defects. The treatment if there is increase in homocysteine in the urine so the treatment would be if there is increase in homocysteine so the treatment would be that you give increase in homocysteine the treatment would be that you give more of vitamin B6 because this will help in this reaction to go forward to form cystathionine second increase the intake of vitamin B12 because the previous my reaction as we saw the vitamin B12 will lead to the formation of methionine again third increase the folic acid in the diet because it will be important in the one carbon metabolism so this is all for uh, homocysteine if, it is hom if the homocysteine is increased and if there is a uh, homocysteine urea type 1 so in the diet you decrease the methionine and you increase the cysteine content okay that's all for sulfur containing amino acids cysteine will be discussed later thank you